Hi everybody, my name is Richard Obudik and in this uh, short tutorial I'll be talking about primal and dual degeneracy in multiparametric plumbing. Um, degeneracy in general um, is a very uh, important topic for um, constraint optimization and so first I'll go briefly uh, through two classes of uh, degeneracy before we look at their impact on to multiparametric uh, programming. Now what is degeneracy? In mathematical optimization or constraint optimization in general we tend to solve a problem right, with an objective function f of x which is subject to uh, the constraints g of x. Okay, I've omitted here uh, equality constraints just for um, simplicity. And uh, the objective, what we really want is the optimal objective function value z star. And so the solution to the problem is the um, is the primal solution, so called primal solution, which is x star. So uh, those are the values of, of your minimizer x, as well as so called Lagrangian multipliers lambda star. Those are associated you are, uh, with the inequality constraints, and you have one per inequality constraint. And um, if you want to learn more about Lagrangian multipliers and so on. I recommend you any textbook on mathematical optimization. Uh, in the description, I have linked to one uh, which I personally um, like, which is the one by uh, Professor Fludas. Um, but the ultimate objective is to get your best solution in terms of the object optimization problem. So you z star, right? And so degeneracy means that there is more than one pair x star lambda star which yields the optimal objective function value okay so there is more than one pair of those things that you can substitute into the problem which yield your z star and so this really is 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 the key sentence here and um it's obvious that if such a degeneracy occurs then this might have huge impacts on your solution strategy. Now, in, type, in terms of types of degeneracy, we generally distinguish two types. We have um, primal degeneracy, which means we have more than one lambda star. So if you look at this right here, then we have um, a linear programming problems. Okay, We have the, um, uh, the hyperplanes of the, um, of the objective function, a dotted, dotted line. And then we have uh, the constrained um, feasible set, which is uh, which is a polytope in this case. And now uh, note here that we have at the optimal solution, which is denoted by this dot right here, we have another constraint which just touches the feasible set. This type of constraint is called um, a weakly redundant constraint. Weakly because it is it does intersect with the feasible set but it doesn't constrain the feasible set it's not uh, we say a supporting plane of the um, of the polytope in this case and so so you can omit this constraint without changing the feasible set um, but what happens now if you get this solution so if this is your x star which is unique right then uh, you can this x star is associated you can say what's what's the optimal active set which ones are the active constraints on this point and that's not unique right so that's your degeneracy right here you can say it's this constraint and this constraint you can also say it's this constraint and this constraint and also this constraint and this constraint okay so that's that's the general idea of primal degeneracy okay so unique x star non-unique lambda star or yeah dual degeneracy is uh, similar um, it's in fact the uh, exact um, complement to this because obviously primal and dual problems are complements to each other. Um, and this is depicted right here. So um, say we have a linear programming problem and we have again a polytope. And now in this case, for instance, we have the objective function value, objective function, excuse me, which is linearly dependent on the constraint right on the active constraint and what that means is that you can move anywhere on this dark um, on this bold line 
and it will yield the exact same optimal objective function. And because that's the case, all of these points are val valid optimal solutions. And uh, it's easy to understand that uh, finding one of those can be, um, or, or this situation in general can provide uh, yield a lot of problems. Now, these are the two types of degeneracy that we are going to be looking at. And um, what do those do to mathematical programming? What do they do when, when you run your algorithms? Now, for optimization in general, well, this is really what makes a difference between a good solver and a great solver. Um, because if a g solver is good to, is able to robustly handle cases of degeneracy, or uh, also other cases like numerical inaccuracies and so on, um, scaling issues, that's what really makes a solver great. Um, in general, what can be said is that only one of the solution will be reported. So if you found a valid x star lambda star, then um, which which yields the optimal z star, which yields z star, and you know it's optimal, then the solver stops. Right. So that's that's the general thing what what solvers do. So they guarantee you that this is optimal z star, um, and that's it. And then there's, for instance, in Cplex, there's several options when it comes to uh, pruning and 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 stopping of the algorithm, which you can also look into. However, in this tutorial, what we're talking about is multi-parametric programming. And if you're not familiar with multi-parametric programming, I suggest you have a look at the other videos on this channel, um, which explain uh, in more detail the, the specific aspect. So I assume that you now know a little bit about it. The point is, the m is much, much more difficult because we're not just looking for a point, we're looking for, we're exploring a space, right? So we're looking for uh, functions. And you can understand that if you have degeneracy, it's much, much more complicated because you can't just say, I found a point, I'm good. You have to explore, so to speak, the degeneracy. So it depends. And now what, what can we do? What do we do in, in, in reality in, uh, in multi-parametric programming? Now, in primal degeneracy, like, let's look at this first. Primal degeneracy, again, we have the solution where we have um, multiple constraints um, at the optimal solution x star. And um, that means we have multiple lambda star, which means we can have multiple combinations of active sets. And that's very relevant because your solution is your parametric solution uniquely depends on the active set. So once you have given an active set, you can directly calculate the parametric solution. If you don't know how to do that, there is another video where we explain this. But basically what you do is you, you can solve the KKT conditions parametrically and um, that allows you to, um, uh, to, to, to get the, the closed form solution, which only depends on the active set. So once you sub, sub an active set in there, you get the parametric solution x star, uh, x theta and lambda theta. Now, if you look at this picture, you understand that any parametric solution, including weakly active constraints as its active set, will yield a lower dimensional critical that's hugely important. So whenever you use, so here you have, for instance, you have three options, right? You can say this and this is my active set, this and this is my active set, and this and this is my active set, right? And what if you use one of the first two, so one that includes this weekly active, active constraint, then this will yield the lower dimensional critical region. Now, instead of going into the mathematical proofs here, which you which are pretty obvious um, uh, in any case, it's more of a conceptual idea. This point, this, 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 this constraint is only, um, um, the, the, the solution can only go along this constraint for one point or a lower dimensional slab of the n-dimensional region. So this ex obviously extends to n dimensions. Um, and so because that's the case, any parametric solution that uses that as its active set, which means um, uh, that part um, holds as equality, then um, it has to be a lower dimensional critical region, right? And so what can we do is we can identify this by solving for the Chebyshev center. Um, the Chebyshev center effectively identifies the, um, the radius of the largest ball that fits into a polytope, right? And so uh, if that's zero, 
uh, then this is an indication, or this means that it's a lower dimensional Kojic region, and we can so identify um, uh, primal degeneracy extremely easy. So that's that's really not a problem. Now, um, now we come to the more complicated case, which is dual degeneracy. Now, as we said before, dual degeneracy means we have multiple x stars, so we have multiple solutions x of um, x along the constraint um, and that has also another impact which means that one or more of the lambda star equals to zero what mean what that means is that so this bold constraint that you see right here that is in fact optimal right so that's part of the active set but if you think about it the lagrangian associated lagrangian multiplier will be zero and it's quite intuitive to understand why. The Lagrangian multiplier says or indicates how much the optimal objective function value changes if you move along the constraint. Okay, So it's basically a, a, a penalty term on the constraint. And here, regardless of where you move on the constraint, the optimal objective function doesn't change so the weight has to be zero right and so um, but that's normally indicates that the constraint is inactive because uh, if the constraint is inactive then also it doesn't matter uh, whether we move along that because it's anyways inactive and it's not determining anything any part of the solution and so this is a very tricky situation and um, it's very, uh, from a multiparametric standpoint, very difficult because you have to ex explore the polytope. You can't just um, say we have found one solution and that's it. And so what that results in is that any parametric solution, including an optimal active set with lambda of theta equals to zero, might yield an overlapping set of critical regions. Okay, That means that um you uh, you can have regions which are um on top of each other and not disjoint like we normally have in multiparametric programming and that's very important especially when you look at uh, at applications or any type of use of the multiparametric solution because there we normally say this region has this optimal function that region has that optimal function note and this is very important the solutions are the same right so if they're Parametric solutions are the same in the sense that they yield the same optimal objective function value, but that they they are overlapping and they have different optimal active sets. Okay, and so what can we do about this? This is really really hard. It's really really hard to do, and there's been uh, two or three um, uh, let's say attempts to solve this, and let's say the the most important one or the best idea let's say is a thing called lexicographic perturbation now um, I won't go into lexicographic perturbation here um, but the basic idea is you instead of looking at at this thing right here at, um, at the objective function l going directly uh, linearly dependent on that constraint we m move the objective function a little bit so we make a perturbation, okay, which then makes it unique, and we end up in one of the corners, in one of the um, uh, in one of the vertices of the polytope, right? And that makes it again unique. And you can prove, um, and for this I refer you to the publication below, uh, in the in the description, you can prove that that results again in a disjoint uh, partition of the parameter space, which is in fact optimal. Um, you can also prove um that the um the solution of an uh multiparametric programming problem has to be a connected graph and uh, for the mo MPLP case multiparametric linear programming case um this means that when you have a dual degeneracy you have actually in fact two graphs and you just have to pick one of the two and so that's um that's another way of looking at it 